Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good to see you back again. We are here with the Vishnu Sastram playlist once again after a long time. Which is the text today? It's text number 18. Swambhu Shambhu Swambhu Shambhu Aditya Shambhu Aditya Pushkaraksho Mahasvanaha Anadhinidhano Dhata Vidhata Dhatu Ruttamaha Swambhu Shambhur. Lord Krishna is the self sufficient Lord. Swambhu. Mm -hmm. Whose auspicious transcendental qualities bring great happiness to the devotees. Shambhu. Among the demigods, he appears in a splendid golden form, Aditya, and he is all pervading, Pushkaraksha. He is the supreme object of worship, Mahasvanaha, Shvana. And he was never born and will never die, Anadi Nidhana. He is the original creator before Brahma or anyone else, Dhata. And he is the original author of all Vedic injunctions, Vidhata. He is the supreme person, Dhatu Ruttamaha. Note. Krishna's self-sufficiency is described in Isha Upanishad, Mantra 8. Kavir Manisi Paribhu Swambhu, the Supreme Person is self-sufficient philosopher, is the self-sufficient philosopher who is omniscient and the greatest of all. The all-pervasiveness of the Lord is explained in the Shruti Shastra. Akasatma, Aka Akasatma. Akasatma, okay. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is all pervading. Srila Baldev Vidya Bhushan presents the following quotes from the Shruti, where Krishna's authorship of them is explained. Tasya eva etasya mahato putasya nisvasitam etad yat rigvedo yajurvedaha. The Rig Veda and the Ajur Veda are produced from the breathing of the Supreme Personality of God. Yo Brahmana Nam Vidha Vidadhati Purvam Yo Vidyas Tasmai Jnanai Pati Sakrishnaha. It was Krishna who in the beginning instructed Brahma in Vedic knowledge and who disseminated Vedic knowledge in the past. In the Bhagavad Gita, 14th chapter, 3rd verse, 14.3, Krishna himself explains that he is the original creator of all living entities. Mama Yunir Mahad Brahma Tasmai Garbham Dadhyami Aham Sambhava Sarva Bhutanam Tato Bhavati Bharata The total material substance called Brahman is the source of birth. And it is that Brahman that I impregnate, making possible the births of all living beings. O oh, son of Bharata. All right. This is the 18th verse which we discussed just now. So let's go a bit on the 17th verse. So in that uh, last video which you had seen, 17th verse, I'll read out the translation. Sarva Sarva Shiva Sthanu Bhuta Dir Nidhira Sambhavo Bhavano Bharta Prabhava Prabhudishwaraha. Lord Krishna is present everywhere and therefore he is everything. Sarva. He is supremely beneficial. Sarva. And he is most auspicious. Shiva. He is always very merciful. Sthano. And he is the creator of all living entities. Bhutadi. He gives happiness to all. Nidhi. And he is imperishable. Avyaya. He always thinks of how to protect the devotees, Bhavana. And he descends to the material world in order to protect them, Sambhava. Sambhava. He is the maintainer of the devotees, Bharataha. Bharat, no, it's not Bharata, sorry, it's Bharata. And he is the origin of everything, Prabhava. He is the supreme master who can perform any feat impossible to be performed by Brahma or anyone else, Prabhu. And he is the supreme controller of all living entities, Ishwara. 
So in that verse, we saw how Krishna's position was uh, beautifully re-established again hmm, as the all-powerful God. And how he is the protector of his devotees that was reinstantiated once again. Hmm. So what is the thrust of this verse? Lord Krishna is the self-sufficient Lord. Swambhu. So now the word Swambhu has many meanings. One of the meanings of the word Swambhu is uh, self-manifested. Okay. So another name of Lord Brahma, the four-headed Brahma, who created this universe, who he is also known as Swambhu because he is self-manifested. Self-manifested doesn't mean he is just uh, out of nowhere. <laughs> it means that Lord Vishnu had created him now uh, without the help of any woman. Okay, so. Lord Vishnu can do that. He doesn't have to impregnate a woman to produce an offspring, but a normal man cannot do that. Okay. So Lord Brahma is also sometimes known as Swambhu. But here it is mentioned Lord Krishna is the self-sufficient Lord. So he is also referred to as Swambhu. But in case of Brahma, at least there is a creator. Okay. But for Krishna, there is no creator. He is the creator of all creators. Whose auspicious transcendental qualities bring great happiness to the devotees. Shambhu. So the word Shambhu is generally used uh, to address Lord Shiva. But here this is used to address Lord Krishna. Among the demigods, he appears in a splendid golden form. Aditya. He is all pervading. Pushkaraksha. So who is this Aditya? He appears in a splendid golden form, Aditya. Mm -hmm. One of the sons of Aditi. Who is he? He's none other than Vamandev himself. Okay. So Vamandev is the avatar of Vishnu, very famous avatar who had uh, taken three steps of land from Bali Maharaj and then took everything from him. He is all pervading, Pushkaraksha, all pervading. And that's the meaning of the word Vishnu, one who resides in every bit of this universe. Vishwanu. Pushkaraksha. He is the supreme object of worship. Mahasvana. And he was never born. So let's talk about this first. He is the supreme object of worship. So once Lord Shiva uh, was meditating and Devi Parvati, his consort, asked him that the whole world is meditating upon you. Who are you meditating upon? Then Lord Shiva says this famous verse, which will also come here in the Vishnu Sahasranam, right? And that's the verse which comes three times in the Vishnu Sahasranam, right? Shri Rama Rama Rame Ti Rame Rame Manorame. It's a very famous verse. Sahasranama Tattulyam Shri Rama Rama Varanani. He says, oh, Devi Rama, I am meditating on the beautiful names of Lord Ram. And thousand names of Vishnu is equal to one name of Ram. So when you chant the name of Ram once, it's like chanting uh, 1000 names of Vishnu. And there are there is also a statement in the scriptures, which clearly says that three names of Lord Ram equals to chanting one name of Lord Krishna. So when you have uh, chanted the name of Krishna once. And then you have chanted 3000 names of Vishnu. Three times you have chanted the Vishnu Sastana. <laughs> Just if you uh, chant one, one name of Krishna. Like, he is the supreme object of worship. So how do you know this? You, you can get uh, many, many, many uh, examples for this. Okay, So Lord Shiva says this and Lord Shiva also says in... Um, Another place, you know, Aradhanam api sarvesham Vishnu Aradhanam param tasmat parataram devi tadiyanam samarachanam. He says, among the worships, all the worships, the worship of Lord Vishnu is the supreme, but there is something even higher than him. That's the worship of his paraphernalia, which is his devotees. Tadiyanam samarachanam. Okay. Tadiya, the word tadiya means his para, uh, paraphernalia, basically. And uh, we also have uh, Lord Brahma. He has very beautifully uh, compiled the Brahma Samhita. No? Govindamadi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami, he says. 
So in that he describes uh, about Krishna as the Supreme Personality of God and the Brahma Samhita starts like this. You know, Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha Anade Radir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam Chintamani Prakara Sadma Sukalpa Viksha Laksha Viteshu Surabhira Vipala Yantam Lakshmi Sahastra Satasambha Masevya Manam Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami Angani Asya Sakalendri Avritti Manti All right, so and then we also have uh, so many different uh, um, stutras and uh, stutrams are there so many it's like so many stutis of Vishnu we have and then we also have this uh, famous verse from Srimad Bhagavatam which, which says you know Yam Brahma Varunendra Ruddha Maruta Stunvanti Divyai Stavai Nishadaira Gayanti Samaga which means the Samavedas are chanting you know, like Yam Yamraj Brahma Varun Varuna is the god of water. Okay. Indra. Indra is the king of the devatas. He is also the king of uh, rings actually. Okay. Lightning is under Indra actually. Yam, Brahma, Varun, Indra. Rudra. Rudra is Shiva himself. Maruta. Maruts. They are the wind gods. Stunvanti Divyaistavai. They are doing stuti. What kind of stuti they are doing? Hmm. Who won the cricket match? Who is going to win the elections? Is it, um, is it uh, the BJP is going to win, or the Congress is going to win, or in US, you know, the Republicans or the Democrats or whoever, right wing, left wing, whoever is going to win? <laughs> what kind of stuti they are? Stuti means praise, you know. It's like you are glorifying somebody. Hmm? Stunvanti divyaistavai. Divya means divine. Okay. He is the supreme object of worship. Mahaswana. And he was never born and will never die. Anadi Nidhana. So he was never born. But then he, uh, Vishnu had taken avatars, right? He was born as Krishna and Ram. No, he was not born. That is why. Uh, whenever days like Ram Naomi or Janmashtami comes, we do not say that these are birth days, okay? Because uh, birth day means that you have taken birth, okay? The soul has taken birth in a material body. But Krishna says in the Gita that my body is totally spiritual. Janma karma chame divyam evam yu veti tatpatha tyaktva deham puna janma. Naiti mameti soul, you know, that my actions are divine. Janma is divine. My birth is divine. Janma, karma, act, birth and actions are divine. Okay. So therefore, uh, whenever Krishna appears, he does not literally take birth like a man or a woman. Okay, from another woman. He, that literally doesn't happen. He doesn't come under influence of material energy. He's always beyond that. Okay. Janma karma cha me divyam. Okay. Evam yo veti tattvataha. Tyaktva deham punar janma. One who understands this, naiti maamiti sojuna. Punar janma naiti, which means Arjuna, he will not take uh, rebirth again. One who understands this. Now we may say, that, oh, but I heard, I also know now okay, that Krishna's qualities and his birth and his actions, they're divine. So do I not take another birth now? Well, you may know it theoretically. I may know it theoretically, but we have to experience this and realize this. Okay, that's what is very important. So therefore, we we do not celebrate birth days of avatars. We celebrate appearance days of avatars. Okay, so it's like a person was there already, but suddenly that person has appeared. So that is why we call uh, these days. As appearance day, appearance day of Lord Nursing Dev, Nursing Chaturdashi, appearance of Vaman Dev, Vaman Dwadasi. Then, um, yeah, so many appearance days. You know, Janmashtami is there, Ram Naomi is there. Okay. Varadev Dwadasi, or whichever, there are so many uh, avatars are there, and uh, therefore they appear. So don't think that they are taking birth, okay? He was never born and he will never die. Anadi Nidhana. Okay. 
why will he never die? Because he doesn't have a material body. His body is completely transcendental. It's made of spiritual substances. Okay, Sat Chit Ananda. So therefore, he will never die. He is the original creator before Brahma or anyone else, Dhata, and he is the original author of all Vedic injunctions. Okay. He is the supreme person, Dhatu Ruttama. Mm -hmm. Very interesting word. So he is the original creator before Brahma. That's what Lord Brahma says. Ishwara Parama Krishna Sakchid Ananda Vigraha. Okay. Anadir Adir Govinda. Okay. Anadir Adir, which means like the beginning. <laughs> Sarva Karana Karanam is the cause of all the causes. So all the creations are manifesting because of him, right? That's what the Brahma Samhita says. And he's the author of all Vedic injunctions. Mm -hmm. Krishna also says in the Gita now. Where does he say in the Gita? Write it down. He says this about the Vedas. Veda, Vedescha Sarved Ahameva Vedyo. Vedanta Kritveda Videva Chaha. He is the Supreme Person. Dhatu Uttamaha. Uttama, sorry. Oh, Uttamaha. <laughs> Alright, so Vidhata. What is the, one of the word um, meanings of the word Vidhata is one who decides what happens where. So he has given all the Vedic injunctions. Okay. Therefore, he is also known as Vidhata. Generally, this word Vidhata is used for Lord Brahma, generally sometimes, in the Vedic context. Sometimes it is also used for Indra, sometimes it is also used for Shiva. But in this context, the word Vidhata specifically refers to Krishna. <clears throat> so, what are the names? Uh, what are the abbreviations? He is self-sufficient Lord Swambhu. Yes, oh, we didn't discuss this much. Sorry. The first Canto, first chapter, first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam says this, you know. Janma Dyasa Yataun Vaya Ditaratas Chartheshu Bhigya Swarat Tene Brahma Hridaya Dikavaye Muhyanti Yatsurayaha. In that it is said, Janma Dyasa Yatahan Vaya Ditaratas Chartheshu Bhigya Swarat. That word is used, Swarat. Swarat means one who is fully independent. There is only one person who is independent. Who is that? God himself. All the idiots of Kali Yuga, you know, crying about independence. They're all headless people. They, they don't know that they're dependent. Or like, when they're young, they're dependent on parents. You know, when they're uh, when they're youthful and they're young, uh, uh, then sometimes they feel we are independent, but then they are not actually. When they are old, they are again dependent on somebody, or maybe in the they are dependent on the government or pension or something like this. All right, you are dependent on the air. If there is no air, you will die. <laughs> Sometimes people they tell me that, sir, according to you, should I have a job or should I have an independent business, an independent profession? You know, I said even if you have an independent profession, you will still be dependent on clients. All right, no businessman in this world is independent. But the modern headless civilization of Kali Yuga is always boasting about fake independence. You know? And they are lonely, they are empty, they are just miserable deep down inside. But he is the only one who is independent, one who doesn't need anybody. Yeah. And in Kali Yuga, there are many people who keep saying, I don't need you, but I just want you. you know? <laughs> so it's a way of saying that. Anyways... <laughs> Whose auspicious transcendental qualities bring great happiness to the devotees. Sarvair gunais tatra samasate sura vasudeve bhagwati bhakti rakinchana sarvair gunais tatra samasate sura harava bhakta se kuto mahat gunan manorate nasati dhavato bahi. That is a very, very, very famous shloka from the Srimad Bhagavata, which says that one who practices spiritual life and goes close to Lord Vishnu. Sarvair gunais tatta samasati sura. All the beautiful qualities, divine qualities of the devatas. You know, truthfulness, humility, tolerance, mercy, cleanliness, you know, abundance mentality. All of these things, uh, samasate suraha, they come and they reside inside you. Right? That is why it says it brings great happiness and trans transcendental qualities. 
which we have discussed about uh, Aditya Pushkaraksha. He is all pervading as Vishnu himself. Um, he is the supreme object of worship, Mahasvana, and he was never born, okay, and he will never die. He is the original creator, Dhata. He is also the Dhata. He is Dhatur Uttamaha also. He is the supreme person, okay. So, and then we discussed from Baldev Vidya Bhushan, where it says the Rig Veda and Yaju Veda produced from the breathing of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It was Krishna who, in the beginning, instructed Brahma. Tene Brahma Hrida Adi Kavaye Muyanti Atsuraya. That is the first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It says that he, Tene uh, Brahma, Brahma means spiritual knowledge. Adi Kavaye means Lord Brahma himself. He is the Adi Kavi. He had uh, given this knowledge to Brahma, okay. How? Adi Kavaye, through the heart, all right. It was Krishna who in the beginning instructed Brahma in Vedic knowledge and who disseminated Vedic knowledge in the past, okay. The material, the total material substance called Brahman is the source of birth and it is that Brahman that I impregnate making possible all the births of all living beings. O oh, son of Bharata, 14th chapter, 3rd verse of the Bhagavad Gita. So this means that when the Mahatattva is there, the Pradhan is there, which is a, which is a very big topic, uh, through which the material creation manifests. So all the living entities who have come to this material world, like you and me, <laughs> We uh, we are in a, a state of sleep actually. Okay? We are in dormant state. But as soon as Mahavishnu places a glance, you know, he just sees. Then the material nature becomes active. Otherwise, it's inactive. It's like dead. Nothing's there till the time he glances. It's absolutely dead. There's nothing there. Right. <coughs> Okay, so <clears throat> this verse is a very beautiful verse which <clears throat> tells you uh, so many things are there you know, about worship primarily and about Vidhata, Dhata, Dhatur Uttamaha. Right? It's a very beautiful verse. So, whom to worship, how to worship, how to worship is not very much mentioned, but who to worship is definitely mentioned here. All right, and <clears throat> It's a very beautiful verse. So next time we will read the uh, next verse, the 19th verse. Okay. Lord Krishna is so and so. Next time. <laughs> All right. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to it below. And if you want a consultation from me regarding a horoscope, please go down to my website. And God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And if you have not watched the Vishnu Sasana videos earlier, please watch them. Oops, here in the playlist. All right. Thank you.